the Duchess of Malfi. Oh, ho, such a tragedy. So much deceit, so many deaths, a complicated plot. We will come to know about this play today. Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walad. Today's play under British literature is, listen to the original title, The Tragedy of the Duchess of Malfi. Look at the spelling. In five acts, okay? Published in the year 1623, the Duchess of Malfi was first premiered or performed privately at Blackfriars Theatre. Later, it was performed, you know, on a big scale at the Globe in the year 1613 or 1614. Playwright is John Webster, about whom we do not know much. He might be born in the year 1578, but we're not sure. Lived till 1632, not sure again. Do we have any portrait of John Webster? No. So an English playwright of Jacobian literature, there is no portrait of his. Genre of this play, the tragedy of the Duchess of Malfi is, it's a Jacobian revenge tragedy. And setting is Italy, which places in Italy? Amalfi or Malfi, that is one and the same thing, Rome, Loreto, and Milan. With this, we are in a good position to begin with the play. Location is the Italian town of Amalfi. Who rules over it? It is the Duchess. The Duchess is a kind and virtuous ruler of Amalfi. She has two brothers, a cardinal, that is a member of the clergy of the Roman Catholic Church, and Ferdinand, who is the Duke of Calabria. Ferdinand, the brother, is a very wild man, treacherous. Both the brothers are equally treacherous. But the person who shows it more, you know, his wildness is Ferdinand. And note here, Ferdinand is the twin brother of the Duchess. So they look similar, okay? Whereas Cardinal is a religious figure, but very hypocritical. He keeps a mistress named Julia. He even tried to become the Pope. He even told one of, you know, his employees called as Bosola to kill a man for this purpose, okay? So the theme here is religious hypocrisy as seen in Cardinal. So here I want to include the character named Antonio Bologna. Who is Antonio Bologna? He's going to be the hero of today. Antonio, but is he the real hero? We'll come to know. At least he'll be the hero for the Duchess. Antonio Bologna is the steward at the Duchess court. He is an intelligent man and a capable manager. Steward basically is a manager, okay? He's held in high regards by the Duchess and everyone, you know, in the court and everyone in the town. At the start of the play, we find Antonio. He has just returned from the French court and he is praising the French court that it is less corrupt, more proficient as compared to the Italian court. OK, he's talking to his friend Delio. So there is Antonio's friend Delio also in the play. Another character introduced here is Daniel de Basola, whom I will only call Basola. A villain, very, very complicated character in this play, Basola. He has returned from jail after serving his punishment for murdering a man. Remember I told you Basola murdered a man on the orders of the cardinal because cardinal wanted to become the pope? Yes, easy. So who all have we introduced here? The duchess, who is kind. Her two brothers... Cardinal, who is a hypocrite, Ferdinand, who is very wild, Antonio, who is the steward at the Duchess court, and then Bosola, who is the villain of the play. Now let's move on. Very easy till here, right? The Duchess became a widow at a young age, yet she is beautiful and young, but her brothers do not want her to remarry. There are reasons behind it why the brothers don't want the Duchess to remarry. First, out of pride. They want that the honor of their family name should be upheld. And second, greed. They want that the Duchess's property or inheritance should be theirs. But if she will marry, that will not be the case. No, if she will marry, she'll have an heir, she'll have a son. So the brothers, they tell, you know, her, they tell their sister that you will not remarry. Moreover, moreover, understand, the Duchess's twin brother, who? Ferdinand. He carries incestuous desires for her. What is incestuous? Sexual. When the two brothers make it clear to their sister that she must never remarry, she confides in her maid, Cariola, that she will rather marry again. Yes. The Duchess decides, who are these brothers of mine to order me that I should not remarry? I will find a man. I will remarry. 
and she tells all this to her maid, Cariola. So whom does the Duchess woo? Tell me, who will she woo? Antonio, her steward. Here the theme is inversion of the traditional male and female roles in courtship. Usually it is said that the male woos the female, but here the Duchess woos Antonio. The Duchess considers Antonio to be a complete man. And he is grateful to fall in love with the royalty, of course, because his social and political standing is definitely low. Okay, he's from the common class. He's just a steward. But before marrying the Duchess, Antonio makes it clear that he is marrying for love. He loves the Duchess, not just for money. This, the theme, truthfulness, it is showcased here. After this, the two marry in secret. They don't let their marriage be revealed outside. Right? Because the brothers, they're, they're going to get mad. Meanwhile, Ferdinand, he feels that something is fishy going on, you know, in the court of Amalfi. So he hires the villain Bosola as a spy. So Bosola begins to work as a stable manager at the Duchess estate, keeps an eye over her affairs, while Cardinal and Ferdinand, they leave for Rome. Nine months pass. Bosola has a strong feeling that the Duchess is pregnant. To confirm, he gives her favorite, her favorite apricots to eat. I must tell you, pregnant ladies are told not to take apricots because apricots, they induce labor pain. So what will happen? The Duchess eats the apricots and gets very unwell. There is a kiosk in the court, but Antonio somehow manages it saying that, you know, the Duchess is not well in her health, blah, blah. But... Bosola's suspicions turn correct and he quickly writes a letter to his masters, that is, the brothers of the Duchess in Rome. Here the theme is deceit. Now when Ferdinand finds that his sister, the Duchess, is sleeping with a man, is pregnant, his sexual jealousy infuriates. He gets so mad that he orders Bosola to find out the Duchess's lover or husband and the father of her children. A few years pass. The Duchess gives birth to total three children, three of Antonio's children, okay? Still not able to figure out the Duchess's husband, one night the brother enters the sister's bedchamber. Which brother will come? Duke Ferdinand. Duke Ferdinand enters Duchess's chamber. He gives her a knife, tells her to kill herself because she has disgraced their royal blood. Here the theme is male authority. And out of fear, the Duchess confesses that, yes, she is married, but nothing more. And after this, Ferdinand pledges never to see his sister's face again. Okay? Soon after this, you know, the Duchess knows that Antonio and she are in big trouble. So they hatch a plan. They plan that Antonio will flee the kingdom first and the Duchess will follow soon. And the two of them will elope from the kingdom with their children. Okay? Okay? So executing their plan, listen to what the Duchess does in her court. She announces in her court that she is firing Antonio, exiling him from the kingdom since he has duped her or swindled her out of her fortune, tried to steal money from her. But now Bosola understands. Kuch to garbar hai. Clever Bosola plays a game here. He supports Antonio. He calls him loyal. He calls him a very, very, uh, you know, uh, hardworking, a very, uh, a man of high standards. He tells Duchess, no, no, your allegations are wrong. What is he doing? Playing politics. Musola is playing politics. Theme is politics. Although Antonio is exiled, the Duchess innocently feels that Bosola likes Antonio. So she confides in him that Antonio is innocent, as in, and is in fact her husband. The curtain is unveiled. Bosola knows that the husband of the Duchess is Antonio. She, in fact, asks for Bosola's help in their plan to escape. And this way, through Bosola, the brothers come to know about Duchess's husband and her eventual plan. Location, Rome. Ferdinand, when hears the news about Duchess and Antonio, gets so mad, extravagantly mad, that he orders for quick revenge. But Cardinal, he says that, keep your calm, brother. Don't act on impulse. Just wait. Let the correct, you know, time come. We will take our revenge on our sister. Don't rush. But Ferdinand does not listen. He orders Bosola to capture the Duchess, Antonio, their three children and kill them. 
Bosola manages to capture only the Duchess and her two children, Antonio and his eldest son escape or flee to Milan. After this, what happens? The Duchess is kept under house prison at her Amalfi Palace. Her maid is also there with her. After this, Ferdinand enters and tortures his sister in different ways. This torture scene is very overwhelming. You should know how the brother tortures a sister. First, he shows her the hand of a dead man, convinces him, you know, her that Antonio is dead. He plays a trick with silhouettes to convince the Duchess that even her children are dead. The torture continues when the Duchess is left alone with mad men, mad people, whom Ferdinand has called from an insane asylum. Here the theme is torture, excessive torture. When, you know, uh, the Duchess, she's taking everything very calmly, very patiently. But when she comes to know that her husband is dead, she does not want to live anymore. And at this time, Busola feels very bad for the Duchess. He starts disliking the brothers. And all of a sudden, he has this guilt and change of heart, which makes him a complex character although he continues to obey, you know, the Duke. So following the Duke's orders, Bosola disguises himself as an old man, comes to the Duchess, tells her that I'm going to kill you. But the Duchess is not scared. She keeps her composure. She keeps her honor. She's ready to accept death gracefully. And at this moment, the executioners enter and they strangle the Duchess, her two children and her maid Cariola. Ferdinand enters and looks at the Duchess's dead body. And here is where Ferdinand will start getting mad. Okay. But before this, there is a very famous scene. So the Duchess is dead. She wakes up, you know, for a moment. And Bosola tells her that your husband is not dead. He's alive. And just listening to this, the Duchess falls and dies. That is a scene. After this, Ferdinand, as I told you, his mad days begin. He regrets hiring Bosola to kill the Duchess and gradually loses his sanity. He believes that he's a wolf. He starts digging up graves. Okay, this is called as lincanthropia, acting like a wolf. The theme is guilt and punishment. And at Milan, Antonio, who has fled with his eldest son, remember, he does not yet know about the death of his wife and the death of his other two children. So very innocently, Antonio decides that he will return and try to reconcile with the cardinal and try to make peace. But moreover, you know, Busola has got very, very dissatisfied because he does not like the treatment of the brothers with the sister. And also he's not paid well for his service. Okay, he needs money for all the treachery he has shown, but he's not given that much money, you know, by the cardinal. So his disgust against these brothers, it increases. So now Bosola takes up the cause of revenge for the Duchess of Malfi. He all of a sudden comes on the side of the Duchess and Antonio. Duchess is no more. So now Bosola will be on the side of Antonio. So when the Cardinal orders Bosola to kill Antonio, Bosola plans to kill the Cardinal instead. Imagine. Here the evil Cardinal has already planned that after Bosola will kill Antonio, I will kill Bosola. Oh my God. Listen to it carefully. At this moment, the cardinal confides in his mistress, Julia. Remember, cardinal has a mistress, Julia. He tells her that, yes, I was involved in the death of the duchess. Okay. Bosola tells Julia to do this. But shortly after this confession, cardinal kills Julia by forcing her to kiss a poisoned book. Theme is evil. Now get ready for the multiple deaths in the play. We are coming towards the end of the Duchess of Malfi. The Cardinal is in his private prayer service. Antonio stealthily enters trying to make peace. Bosola stealthily enters to kill the Cardinal, but mistakenly he stabs Antonio. Before Antonio dies, Bosola tells him that his wife and two children are dead. After this, in the darkness of the night, Bosola stabs the Cardinal twice and kills him. But at this moment, Ferdinand enters. He has become mad. In his madness, he mistakes his brother for the devil. So he stabs both the cardinal and the bosola. The cardinal dies while bosola stabs Ferdinand before dying. Theme is tragedy. Too much tragedy. Too many deaths. Ferdinand's last words in the play are, our deaths are caused by our own actions. And bosola also makes a final speech and dies. 
at the end of the play on the stage, you see the eldest son of the Duchess and Antonio entering along with Delio, Antonio's friend. They enter. So their eldest son, they he would take the place as the heir to the Malfi throne or the Malfi fortune, despite his late father's wish that he fly the court of princes because of its corruption and dangers. Here the theme is political necessity. Of course, somebody has to rule the kingdom now and political greed. Delio says, informs the audience that I am going to raise this man to be the next heir of Malfi. We're done with the Duchess of Malfi. Did you like it? Few points to ponder. This play is based on the book, The Palace of Pleasure by William Painter, which is an adaptation of an Italian novella, which was in fact based on true historical events. Yes, most of the characters discussed in this play are real. For example, the real duchess's name was Giovanna D'Aragona and she married Antonio Beccadelli in secret and bore him three children. More, more, there are more characters. If you'll read, no, the real characters and the characters in the play, many will match. Okay, with this, we are done with the Duchess of Malfi. Take care of yourself. This is Hina from Team Wallet. And if you liked it, do comment and share this video with your friends. Bye bye.